horrible sight. <laughs> Just as well we're after the watershed. Tommy Sheridan there at uh, a Highland store in central London joins us in our little store here in Westminster. Welcome. The Highlander. The Highlander. Store, yep. Look great. Give it a wee mention because the staff were very, very pleasant and very helpful. I'm sure they were. What will happen between now and 2014 to make a majority of Scots vote for independence? Well, there's going to be hopefully a mature debate, Andrew, and there will be less of the simplised mudslinging um, that you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not intelligent enough to stand on your own two feet, and more arguments about whether we can actually make Scotland a better place for the people that live there. And I think when the arguments are heard, people will be convinced that there are two political agendas on offer here. There's the neoliberal agenda that is very clearly Westminster-led, which is privatisation, more and more selling off of the family silver, less and less of a welfare state. And in Scotland, we're more and more becoming a different country anyway because we've voted for parties that want to protect our health service. We've voted for parties that are opposed to nuclear weapons. We've voted for parties that are opposed to illegal wars. Scotland is becoming more and more different. And I think over the next two years, as the arguments are heard, more and more people are going to say, well, hey, I think it is time for change, particularly among young people, Andrew, which is a very, very I important thing. The polls don't necessarily bear that out, but polls aren't, don't tell you what's going to happen in two years' time. But we've been having this debate in Scotland since the, the modern rise of the nationalists in the 1970s. And the percentage of people who want independence doesn't change. Well, I don't agree with you. I, I well, think... it sticks at around 25 to 30 per cent. Well, I, I think, the, I think the most important point about the argument is that people like me, for instance, who uh, were involved in the, the Labour Party for many years and the Labour movement generally, then around about the 80s under the, the likes of Tony Benn, a man of, of great principle, then we all thought, well, hey, there's a British road to social justice, as a British road to socialism. <clears throat> Quite frankly, um, after uh, Alistair's friend Tony took over the Labour Party and uh, expelled Clause 4 from it, there was no prospect of a British road to socialism. Okay. And more and more people have realised if you really want uh, a more equitable country in Scotland, then you're going to have to vote for independence. So is that what Alex Salmond is campaigning for, a most socialist Scotland? No, no the most important thing <clears> to, to bear in mind, Alistair, is me and Alec will have a, a, a difference of um, you know, opinion. What is, what is the Scotland that's going to be after a referendum if you win? The people is of it, Scotland will decide, Alistair. Well, the that's the minute, important yeah, they thing have to vote. They have to decide beforehand. Your vision of what independence will lead to is totally different to his. You want the Queen out of the way, you want the Pound out of the way, you want NATO out of the way. Here, here. He's not Right. Here, and he, here. here, here. And he's now saying, actually, you're getting none of that. No, so the Scottish yeah. people, the reason why the polls are going down for you this week is because the, the Scottish people are starting to realise, actually, this is kind of vote for anything. And now that you're having to answer serious questions, you're not going to find you get the right answers. You've been banging on about the pound. Alistair, for example, Alistair, what Alec and I would agree on is that the Scottish people should decide what an independent Scotland right. should look like. Me, I want a republic. Me, I want us out of NATO. Me, I don't think we should be in the European well, Union if it's going to stop us helping our economy. Happen because he knows Alec, you can't win on that agenda. Alec and the Just SNP... Like your agenda could never win for Alec the and Party. the SNP will be able to argue in 2016 in an independent Scotland for that type of sort of a mixed market type of approach. Okay. I'll be able to argue for a socialist approach. The most important thing is the people of Scotland will decide for themselves because we're but big you, enough you, you and we're mature enough. Let, choose let, me bring in our, uh, let me bring in our Spanish Sassanac here. Um, <laughs> Catalonian. <laughs> you're a bit of a fan of Alex Salmond. Uh, whose side are you on here? Well, I, I think that uh, Alex Salmond is not to be underestimated. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is impossible that he could persuade the Scottish people over the next two years. I think the absence of a substantial figure in any other party who has made his or her career in Scotland is a big problem. Uh, because although Alistair Darling is supposedly going to lead the unionist campaign, he's a man who chose to make his political career outside Scotland at Westminster, as most of the big figures in the Labour Party did. The irony is that I think if Scotland does achieve independence, it is the thing that will save Scotland from socialism. Because socialism is only made possible on the fantastic scale in which it is applied in Scotland today by English subsidy. I mean, at the moment, only 12% of Scots pay more in than they take out. If Scotland were actually on its own, uh, Scotland would have to become a Celtic tiger. You'd have to be a low-tax uh, economy. You'd have to do what <laughs> Ireland did before. And half of Alex Simon knows that. Okay. So 
Well, he's I am. I teeter I, 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 on the brink of being a Tory Scottish nationalist because I think the only way that Scotland right. will, will, will no, make it, I much, much prefer if you stick to the Better Together campaign. Please, um, <laughs> we in the independence, <laughs> pro we in the independence campaign welcome the support for the Tories um, for status quo. Your figures are ridiculous in relation to the 12% input. Uh, for instance, they don't even count public sector workers, thousands and thousands of public sector workers who pay tax, who, who make a contribution. You'd exclude them. And they're, they're just ridiculous. They're not, they're not even worth talking about seriously. The truth is, Scotland is sustainable as a mixed market, small country economy. I think it's also sustainable as a socialist economy because I think we could publicly own our oil and we could publicly own our electricity and our gas and we could publicly own our railways. I think that's the model we should pursue. Right, let me However, ask you this. That's not what the people will decide no, in two years. That, They'll decide on independence. I, I want to ask you this. Putting aside your own views of why you want independence, will it all be decided? on whether or not Scots thinks they'll be better off if they leave the union. I think they'll be part of it, Andrew. And you see, that's why Michael's right not to write off Alex Salmond. Alex Salmond is a canny politician. Mm. Um, many people wrote off the SNP last year. I mean, all the polls that you talk about, they were predicting a Labour victory in the Scottish Parliament elections. What happened was the SNP didn't just win. They won an overall majority. That wasn't supposed to happen at all under the Scotland Act. So the polls, I would be very, very careful no, about over that. overplaying them. But and what I think will happen over the next two years, Andrew, which will persuade Scots to vote for independence, is the British economy is going into a nosedive. More and more public services are going to be slashed in order to feed the austerity programme. And more and more Scots will therefore be saying to themselves, this mob are saying we'll be worse off if we go for independence. But how much worse off can we be? We're in a mess just now. But is it all economics, Alistair? Or did there, was, there was a kind of renaissance of Britishness during the Olympics. Mm -hmm. That included the Scots who won the medals. It was Alex Salmon's nightmare to see them in the Union flag. It could be more than just economics. Is, is there think... life in the old dog yet? Of oh, Britishness. Yeah. No, I think there is. Uh, I, I certainly think ultimately people will decide whether it's better for them and their families. And I think the economics of that will be very important, which is why I think it is good that Alistair Darling is leading the campaign, because I think he'll tear Salmond apart on the argument <laughs> once you get into them. However, I, I, think it's, I think emotion does play a big part in this. But I think that the reason, I know why Salmond has decided to, to play it long, but I think two years is a long time. For Tommy to promote one vision of an independent Scotland, Salmon to do another. There's a Tory businessman out this week seeing he, he supports it because he thinks that Scotland will become a tax haven like Switzerland. Now, the public, I just think, are going to get very confused. And actually, Tommy's point about the economy and the, you say going into a nosedive, I think people will feel actually reluctant to... to Go it alone when you've had Salmon saying first they're going to be Ireland and then they're going to be Iceland and now they're going to be Norway. What he never does is say we're going to be Scotland economically independent. And you don't want the pound being set by the bank of the detested England, do you? But he now does. And it's just confusing as to what you're all saying. You know, it's interesting. You hear all this talk about the countries <coughs> getting into nosedive and Iceland and that. Ireland. I mean, I've got to say, Iceland has, has actually used it to its advantage. It's rewritten its constitution. <laughs> it's began to rediscover public services. It's actually putting some bankers who caused the problem into jail, which is great. But, you know, how many countries in the world right now aren't bankrupt? America is bankrupt, the most powerful nation in, on the earth, and it's bankrupt. So this idea somehow that you can't stand your own two feet because of economic problems, it's just nonsense. And what will happen more and more is people are going to realise, well, wait a minute, okay. if you look what's happening in Westminster, they're privatising the health service. We in Scotland want to retain a public health service and public you, services. The only right. way to do that... We're running out of time, but I could, I could point out to the moment Holyrood already controls the health service. Absolutely. Not London. Absolutely. So why but do you need independence? But, but the reason we need independence is because what, what Westminster's doing now is it's okay. cutting the block grant to try and force the Scottish Parliament to implement cuts All which right. will undermine our health service. But when you're independent... No, no, we run out of time. I just want to ask you... Control our oil reserves. Excuse me, I want to ask you... One day. Everything runs out, including we've run out of time. Yes or no, will Scotland and vote for independence? Uh, no. Yes or no? No. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. And you'll say yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. That's two words. Tommy Sheridan, thanks for being with us. Now, it's late. It's past your bedtime.